Our topic for this session is OBGYN emergencies. Our first case is of an ovarian torsion in a young girl. Note the hypodense and massively enlarged ovary presenting as a pelvic mass with these characteristic peripheral hypodensities consistent with peripheralized ovarian follicles, the definitive diagnostic finding in ovarian torsion. There is the massively enlarged ovary with edematous hypodense stroma and peripheralized follicles. So that is a case of ovarian torsion. Our next case is a bilateral tubo-ovarian abscess. You can see the left tube is dilated right up to its end, and typically the ends of the tubes are more dilated than the bodies. On the right ovarian side, there is a well-circumscribed fluid collection, and more inferiorly, you can really appreciate the dilated, tortuous tubular structure here, probably with a debris or hemorrhage level dependent within it. So we'll focus on the right where you can best appreciate that tortuous dilated tubular structure consistent with hydrosalpinx and then the ovarian fluid collection itself consistent with a tubo ovarian abscess. Our next case is of endometriosis with ovarian and pelvic implants. You see again findings consistent with hydrosalpinx, dilated tortuous tubular structures in both adnexal regions. There's an adnexal fluid collection here on the right as well. Note the tethering of the bowel to these fluid collections, a finding quite characteristic of endometriosis. Lastly, there are well-circumscribed hypodensities that could represent loculated fluid collections or, in this instance, endometrial implants. Now, I admit to having uh, done a lot of endometriosis workups with MR and to have come to an early conclusion that I could, in fact, tell endometriosis from tubo-ovarian abscesses. But I think as you look at these last two cases, you can see that I was unreasonable in my evaluation of my own abilities. Uh, there really is no good way to tell the two apart. Yes, there was tethering, and yes, there is a perirectal implant here. Uh, but all the same, uh, extensive pelvic infection could look very much the same. So let's appreciate again the dilated tubes. Very nicely depicted here. And there again is the bowel tethering. And then lastly, the perirectal implant and the more dependent pelvic ones as well. So that is a case of endometriosis with ovarian and perirectal implants. Our next case is an ectopic pregnancy with hemorrhage you can see high in the abdomen, there is extensive intraperitoneal fluid. In the pelvis, there is hyperdense fluid consistent with extensive hemorrhage, and there is a little hypodense lesion here in the right adnexa immediately adjacent to a vessel. And that is, in fact, the scene of the crime. There it went. And let's take another look at that. Small hypodensity in the right adnexa, immediately adjacent to a vessel, and in this case, the source of all of that intrapelvic and intraabdominal hemorrhage. So that is an ectopic pregnancy with acute hemorrhage. Our next case is a corneal ectopic pregnancy. These, of course, are particularly concerning as they involve the myometrial portion of the fallopian tube in the cornua of the uterus. Uh, 
and so are predisposed to even more dramatic hemorrhage than your typical ectopic. You can see it here, the fluid collection in the corneal portion of the uterus with surrounding gestational trophoblastic changes, and anteriorly, a focus of active extravasation, contributing to a large amount of hyperdense intrapelvic fluid. You can see the intraperitoneal extravasation extending all the way up into the right aspect of the abdomen. And as we enter the pelvis, we can track it right back to the corneal region, which we can see is the source of that hemorrhage, and a very nice view of that gestational sac. So that is a corneal ectopic pregnancy, and let's look at it on the coronal as well. Here again, out on the periphery of the uterus in the corneal region, and you can see you lack a circumferential myometrial rim, which is the telltale sign of a corneal ectopic. And here again, the active extravasation extending all the way superiorly into the right abdomen. Again, note that lack of a myometrial rim, which uh, is the definitive finding for a corneal ectopic. Our next case is a postpartum ovarian vein thrombosis. This one, interestingly, on a non-contrast scan, but it is so pronounced, it is still quite visible. There is obvious right abdominal stranding, but there is a large redundant tubular structure that is hyperdense as well. And that represents the markedly tortuous dilated ovarian vein. You see here a postpartum uterus with marked uterine enlargement and a tiny bit of hyperdense debris or clot within the endometrial cavity. On the video, you can really appreciate the redundant tubular hyperdense ovarian vein, really coursing throughout the right aspect of the abdomen and running down to the right ovary. So that is a postpartum ovarian vein thrombosis, a relatively frequent complication of the postpartum state. Our next case is a postpartum endometritis. There is pronounced enlargement of the uterus, which would be expected in a postpartum state, but also note this pronounced enhancement and thickening of the junctional zone, as well as this fairly large collection of endometrial gas, which is not typically going to be present very long after birth. And there is a nice view of that endometrial cavity. Full of gas and slightly hyperdense. And that was a postpartum endometritis. Our last case is another postpartum complication, this one a uterine rupture. There is a large defect in the myometrium here in the lower uterine segment with associated clot and hyperdense fluid within the pelvis. Very nice view of that defect right there. Let's view it one more time. So pretty clearly a postpartum uterine rupture with pronounced associated hemorrhage. And that concludes this session on obstetric gynecologic emergencies.